Hello. Well, it's Sunday and again, it's a different Sunday to the Sundays that we are used to. I don't know what your week has been like. Um, mine's been a, a really mixed week. I've had some great moments. I've had some really terrible moments. I've been up and I've been down. I've been tired and I've been refreshed. I've been busy and I've been frustrated and I've I've gone through all sorts of different feelings. Um, there's been some some really sad news, obviously, and there's also been some really inspiring things. Um, Thursday night, opening the windows and hearing our neighbourhood applauding the workers of the NHS and key workers. And there's been some amazing stories I've heard from different people in the congregation. I've heard of people who have been out um, braving the shops, doing shopping for people who are in need, uh, people who've been quite desperate have um, had the help they've needed. People who've been um, to chemists and things, just in, in what were normal times, most simple things, but actually now things that are really, really appreciated by those who are in tricky situations. Um, I don't know how you're feeling about, about being isolated. Um, I think there are some people I know who are, who are quite enjoying having a bit of peace and quiet. There are some people who are really, really frustrated. There are some people who are um, actually really kind of devastated by the financial aspects of what's been going on. I don't know where you are. I don't know what your personal position is. Um, actually, amongst our congregation, we're going to have a range of people. Some people who have resources and have things that they can share. Other people who are going to be um, really stuck at the moment. I'm going to be talking about a subject that I've been thinking about for a while, but before I do that, I would just like to say, please, in this time, stay connected. Whether you are somebody who has lots to give, there will be opportunities for you to give. If you're somebody who has little and you need, and you are in need, then please, please, please don't withdraw and retreat. We as a community want to support and encourage and help each other. So whatever position you're in, please stay in touch. Uh, who would you stay in touch with? I think we as a church, we have a phone number that you can call if you yourself need something in particular. But we believe that it's not just about sort of the church providing for people. Actually, some of, the, some of the lovely stories I've heard this week have been members of small groups. So one person in a small group is old and not able to get out. Another person is younger and is active, and, and they've been able to go out and do shopping. And it's, it's not that, they've, that the, the person who's been stuck has rung the church and got help. Actually, a small group of people, just, a, just a, a, you know, half a dozen, a dozen people or so, helping each other out. If you are part of a small group, uh, I keep on, I'd encourage you to keep on um, like connecting with those people. If you're not part of a small group, we have a scheme of small groups in the town. And you can't meet physically in the same place anymore, but you can meet by Zoom, you can meet by whatever, whatever video messaging service is your favourite thing. Uh, and, and also, actually, you can simply call each other and ring each other. You can, you can just find out how each other's doing it's um it's very simple if you would like to be part of a small group please contact us through our, through our facebook page through our website and we can hook you up and connect you with a group of people who are there to look after each other and to love each other that's um that's my encouragement to you I've got, a, I've got a talk I wanted to give for about, about two months now, which is about, um, it's about letting God make an impact on the world through you. And that's been kind of my theme so far this year. How can you let God make an impact in you so that you can make an impact in the world? And, and I've been thinking about various different things in that. So I, I, talked, about, I talked about finances back in, in January. I tried to talk about peace a month ago on a day when I felt very little peace. Um, today, I want to talk quite quickly, and I know that Jay's put, put a fiver on me talking for 40 minutes today, but I'm gonna try and talk briefly about God giving us the gift of self-control so that we 
won't be tossed by the storms of this world. We won't be controlled by outside influences. We won't be controlled by compulsions or addictions. But that God will give us control of our own hearts, our own minds and our own lives. That phrase, self-control, is, is the last of several that come in a, in a beautiful passage of the Bible. In Galatians 5, Paul writes to the early church, people who are still struggling trying to figure out how to live as Christians. And he, he lays out kind of two parts. The first part is he talks about what it looks like when things go wrong. He talks about what it looks like when, when, when people aren't living for God. And then he talks about what it's like when people live with God within them. When God's, God's spirit, his breath is breathed into us and when we receive his life, we live differently. What does it look like? Paul says the fruit of the spirit is this. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Self-control is a gift given to us by God. Now, self-control isn't, um, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll give you an example. My dad, uh, he was famous for, when he had a cup of tea, he'd break his chocolate biscuit in half, and he'd put half the chocolate biscuit away for later. We, we'd occasionally find half a chocolate biscuit in a cupboard. <laughs> that was him, him, him practicing self-control. He was trying to be um, disciplined. Self-control can be a bit like that. It can sound like something boring. It can sound like, oh, oh I've, I've managed to, to hold back from doing X or I've hold back from doing Y. I've managed to stop myself from doing something. It, it's kind of like an absence of a doing. So you're, you're not doing something you shouldn't do. And, and it actually just kind of means that it's nothing. You're doing nothing. Self-control actually means something far, far deeper and more powerful than that. Because the opposite of self-control is being controlled by something else or someone else. Paul talks about God renewing our minds. We lay down what is wrong and we take up what is right. We put aside the wrong things and take up the right things. And as God breathes his new life into us, those things aren't just, just dead within us, they are alive within us. So if, if you're somebody who has, uh, you, you know, you, you, you've been forced back into a, a smaller world, know that in this time, God will work in you. It comes back to the, 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 law, the law that is above any other. Love God and love your neighbour. Let God work that love in you and through you so that in this time you become more trusting, more loving, more generous, more gentle, more kind, more confident, more courageous, more power filled. So that you in this time will be renewed in your deep, deep spirit and God's power will be alive in you. And so I'm going to close with a prayer. Father God, we long to live daily as your children. Not to live wasted and pointless lives, but to live lives that point to you. So Father God, in this new season, 
in this strange season. Lord, show us where we have gone wrong. Lord, where we are being controlled by the world, Lord, point it out to us. Reveal to us the ways that we were walking in that are wrong. And then, Father God, as you lead us forward, Lord, lead us into your good ways, your wholesome ways, your fruitful ways. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. And so if you um, are feeling like there are areas of your life where you are struggling with, um, with addictions, with, some, with being controlled, with compulsions, with anything that you feel is like forcing you to live a certain way, don't just try and struggle and carry it on your own. I, I mentioned small groups earlier on. Small groups are a great area in which you can talk about this stuff. Um, if, you, if, you, if you maybe aren't comfortable sharing it with a, with a bigger group, find somebody within the church who you trust and take it to them, talk it through with them, and they can pray with you. If you are listening to this and you're thinking, oh, well, I don't trust anybody in the church, I don't, I don't really know anybody, I don't have a small group, um, you can get in touch with me through our CSK Facebook page uh, or through the church website. Um, also, our prayer team, even though we're not meeting in church, our prayer team is still uh, running. And we as a church, we can hook you up with somebody who can pray with you, almost certainly over the phone. But don't make it business as normal. Let God use this season to transform you from glory to glory in the image of Christ. God bless you. Amen.